We now want to talk about the derivative of e to the u. So we've already talked about the derivative of e to the x is just itself. Well now, let's combine it together with the chain rule. The derivative of e to the u is e to the u times u prime. So basically, it's just going to be the derivative will be itself and then times the derivative of the exponent. That's how you do a derivative. So let's apply that now to this example problem. Find y prime if y equals e to the negative x squared. In this case, your u is going to be negative x squared. So when you do the derivative, y prime is going to equal, we just write e to the u, so we're going to write the same thing that we started with, and then you're going to multiply it by the derivative of u, or in this case, the derivative of the exponent. We want to do the derivative of negative x squared. That's going to be negative 2x, subtract 1 from the power. We did power rule on the exponent, and then that's it. The only other thing you could do with that is you can rewrite it. You can put the negative 2x out front if you want to. The order doesn't really matter in this case. And you can leave it like that, or if you'd like to take this and put it down below and make it a positive exponent, you could do that as well. But in this case, that's as far as you would need to go. So now that we've done this example, let's look at a little bit more complicated example. Okay, so we just looked at how you find the derivative of e to the u, and the derivative is e to the u times u prime. That's how you would do it. So now let's look at a little bit more complicated example and put that to use. All right, so I have this right here, and normally I would, for other problems, I've been identifying each of these. Let me show you how you would do it. Instead of identifying all the letters there, some people may find it easier just to just go ahead directly with it. So I'm going to do an example that way. Uh, for those people who would rather not use the formula itself. If you're not going to use the formula, then just think this way. You want to start with the outside function and then move to the inside and then the inside. So first, the outside function here is going to be the 6. So something to the 6 power means I can use the power rule. The 6 is going to come down and then I have, I still have all this I have to write on the inside. And then that's going to be to the 5th power. So 6 comes down, subtract 1, and you get this. That takes care of the outside one. Now I need to take care of the derivative of the inside one. I want to do the derivative of e sine x over 2. We talked about before that when you do a derivative of e to the u, you're just going to write itself. You'll write e sine x over 2. And then you're going to multiply it by the derivative of the exponent. The derivative of the exponent in this case, we want to do the derivative of sine x over 2. Okay, the derivative of sine is cosine x over 2. Don't forget, we have to also do the derivative of the inside part here. So actually, this problem, the problems I've done before have three terms there. This one has four terms. So this one I had to use the chain rule multiple times to get the answer. Outside inside, inside more, all the way to the inside. So that's how you kind of do it in a line like that. If you don't want to identify all the variables like we've done previously, then you can do the same way uh, all at once like this. So let me just review those rules, the process one more time. The six came down fifth power. That took care of the outside portion. Next, I want to do the derivative of just this part on the inside, the derivative of e sine x over 2. The derivative of e to the u is e to the u times u primed. Here's e to the u. This whole thing here is considered u primed. So the derivative of sine of x over 2 is cosine x over 2 times 1 half. So you got all four of these pieces multiplied together. The last thing you're going to do is just clean this up and put it all together as a single one. 6 and 2, 6 5 by 2 is 3, takes care of that. I got the cosine x over 2, I can't do anything with that one. Then I have these two powers of e. I have a fifth power and I have one more that's going to raise it up to the sixth power. So then I have e sine x over 2 to the sixth power. So again, I'm adding exponents here. I have all this to the fifth power with all this raised to the first power. 
So I get six of them. Now another way that you could write this is you could apply a exponent rule, an exponent rule there, which means that you multiply the exponents, the power raised to the power, you multiply exponents. So then, then, in that case, you would just write it as six sine x divided by two. And then you could leave that, that would be the most simplified answer. Um, getting, allows you to get rid of one set of parentheses at least. And so this is as far as you can go with your answer.